How's it going? Dave from Comic Book Investments. Well, today I just got in the biggest collection I've ever gotten in. And yeah, I've spent, I spent the most money I've ever spent on a collection uh, and I just got it in. I've been working on this deal for a while now. Finally it worked out and here I have it right here. Just a bunch of boxes that I need to go through. Like some of the uh, keys I pull out, it's like an FF1, you know, X-Men number one, giant size X-Men number one, Hulk one anyone, just tons and tons of different key issues and things like that. So I'm going to unbox all this stuff. It'll take me a while. And then we'll just kind of go through it and see everything I got. It's just crazy. Um, yeah, it's 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 pretty big, uh, big collection in terms of like value. This is the most I've ever spent on a collection. And I'm pretty excited to get it in. So, so let's go through it. Uh, before I do, though, if you haven't subscribed, please think about subscribing. And if you are, thanks. Well, I opened up all the boxes. Um, you can see them around me. Uh, a bunch of short boxes, some case books and stuff like that. Ended up getting uh, pretty messy, so I had to like move stuff out of the way. There's, there's lots of packing material everywhere. So yeah, so now I'm going to go through basically what I got and show you pretty much everything that I got. All right, so let's go through the uh, first box. This was going to be the case stuff in no real particular order. There we go. Got Astonishing Ant-Man variant cover. Mighty Thor. Funny thing is, is I recorded this once already. And then there's, there's so much glare on the case books that I literally, you couldn't really see it. So I popped out this light. I don't know if you can see it it's over here. See? Um, to help. So I'm hoping this helps. If not, then I'll check out the video and might have to record it again. But got a 9A to this and wait for this. Ready? Boom. There's something wrong with the matrix. Two 9.8s. Usually that's how it works, right? Interesting fun fact about this. This right here is Marvel Spotlight number five. First Ghost Rider. It's hard to get in a high, high grade. This is a 6.5, so it's mid-grade because of the black cover. But I was talking to my girlfriend, and she was talking about, I was saying, I was like, oh, I really thought Keanu Reeves was going to be um, Craven. You know, Kevin Feige goes, I want Keanu Reeves. He can basically have his pick of any thing he wants to do or be or whatever it is. And so I was like, oh, man, I thought Keanu Reeves was going to be Craven for sure. That was the rumors going around all this time stuff. And then she goes, but I thought he was going to be Ghost Rider. And I thought about it for a little bit. Here's a good book right here. Side note. Boom. X-Men 266. And I thought about it. And she's like, yeah, they he makes his own motorcycles, which I knew that. He does, like, custom motorcycles and things like that. And he loves motorcycles. Um... And I was like, I guess that kind of makes sense. Like, if you were going to pick a character, why not pick, you know, a character that rides a motorcycle since he loves motorcycles, owns a custom motorcycle shop, which they're like 100 grand. He will probably ride his own company's motorcycle as Ghost Rider. And I was like, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Um, so you heard it here first from my girlfriend. Ghost Rider is going to be... Uh, Keanu Reeves is going to be Ghost Rider. Let's see how accurate that comes. Um, Shuri. First Shuri. Um, turn these a little around. I was actually trying a few... A while ago, I was trying to get a 9-8 uh, of this. And now I do. Through this collection. Spider-Man 39. Here is first appearance cameo of Gambit. This was actually 
published before 266, but I think 266 was kind of in the works before this book. First Silver Surfer and Galactus. And I heard a rumor that um, that in the Loki TV show, he finds out that like Galactus or Silver Surfer make like a cameo or something. So I think like how Thanos was the big bad guy um, in the Avengers movies over the last 10 years, you know, he's always lurking in the background kind of thing and finally appears. I think that's what Galactus will be. Galactus will be the the big bad for the next coming uh, few movies. Spider-Man 300. I'm hoping this light works out. Um, it's just, this stuff is so reflective. First Kingpin. All right, now on to oops. Now on to the the big books. Boom, X Men one. Pretty nice. It's two five, but I love having me X Men ones. Giant size X Men number one and eight O. Look at that. Very cool. Daredevil one. This book was not that expensive. I mean, it was expensive, but not super as expensive as now. Uh, not too long ago, with him possibly coming in MCU. I hope they keep Charlie Cox. All right, we got everyone's favorite book, Hulk one eighty one. Um. First Silver Age Submariner. And then a book I rarely ever get, surprisingly. Actually, I think of all the Silver Age books, this is... No, Hulk 1 is the one I get the least. This is the second least. Uh, I get more Fantasy 15s than this book. Fantastic Four, number one. Very cool book to have. I'm very happy to get this book. Hope you all can see that. But yeah. Interesting enough is they start out as kind of like more monsters. They technically weren't real superheroes till I think issue three when they got uh, superhero costumes. In the beginning, they're just kind of like a monster thing that was going on in the 60s. That's how they started out. And then they got the costumes, and then they're like, oh, this is a thing. This is going to be a hit. And Stan Lee was actually ready to quit working for Marvel at the time because he had it. And uh, his wife suggested, why don't you write the story that you always wanted to write? And since you're leaving anyways, it's not a big deal. So he, he did Fantastic Four. That was the story he wanted to tell. And he wanted, because... He wanted to have superheroes with problems and more relatable than what was currently going on. Turned out to be a huge hit, and you know what happened to the rest. All right, moving on to box two. All right, moving on to box two. Uh, I'm going to move through these a little faster. This is the Spider-Man box. Number 17. 18. But yeah, this this collection was massive. Um, and and I was pretty excited to get it. We it worked out, you know, me and and the uh, the seller um and it up, you know, it took a little time. I've been working on it for a while, but uh, both parties are very happy, which that always makes me happy. Right? I want both people in the deal me and, and the other person to be satisfied with the deal and so yeah um yeah he lived pretty far away and so i i paid to have it shipped over to me and i mean a lot of people feel uncomfortable because they're like well i don't even know you and all this kind of stuff and like you know it helps having you know like not only do i have a youtube that's you know but i have like you can look at my company you know um, my website and all that kind of stuff and you know how long I've been around this is what I do so it puts some people at ease you know um, 
And yeah, then I looked through everything in about a day. And then make the deal happen. So both pretty, you know, pretty happy. Uh, shipping, man, I think I made a little bit of error, but uh, I decided like, oh, I want to hear faster. So I did two day shipping. Cost me 17, over $1,700 to FedEx two day ship this. I mean, hindsight, I should have shipped some of these books like ground and then some of the more expensive stuff two day. I just don't like it sitting somewhere and, you know, this, you know, they just put it on like in a, you know, a warehouse somewhere where it sits between whatever. So I wanted to hear quicker. So not too much turnaround time. Um, but yeah, so got that in happy. There's a, it's mostly the runs are mostly complete. A couple duplicates, a couple missing ones here and there. Um, you know, I'm hoping this light thing also helps with these books as well. I would say, you know, for the most part, these books range anywhere from, you know, you know, they could be like a 2.0 at the lowest, and they go all the way up to like maybe an 8.0. Uh, I would say most of most of the books in this collection, though, probably range uh, the you know the three to four, probably on average somewhere in the three to fours, maybe a five, um, somewhere there. Um, depending, you know, obviously the the high, the later issues are nicer. You know, the earlier issues are not as, as nice. Yeah, so th probably three to five is the grade range for the most part. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, I probably, I mean, it, I probably, I'm not going to run through every single book just because we'd be here all day, <laughs> but I will definitely go through a good amount of them. Um, so yeah, I'll skip some of these Spider-Man. Let's show you some cool ones. There we go. Um, let's see what else we got. There we go. The Prowler. Got two cup copies of the Prowler. Um, have you ever checked out Todd McFarlane's Prowler? Looks just like Spawn. Um, there we go. Introduction of Black Widow. Moving on to Spidey Box 2. Uh, just scan through here. Uh, do, do, do. Like I said, most of it is complete. A couple duplicates. Got a duplicate of that one. Um... I'd say during the Bronze Age, most of the, the keys are, like aren't there. Uh, let's see what we got. We got a, I think we have a 135. Yeah, we got a 135. No 129. No uh, 121, 122. But 135. And then it just like sporadic ones in the Bronze to Copper. Uh, most of this stuff is Silver Age. Uh, most of the keys were uh, cased. So, um, yeah. So let's move on to the next box. Okay. I'm just going to show you. Got the Avengers next. Um, oops. That's the Golden Record uh, reprint. So, not the original. Yeah, just a few keys down. 
the lower end. Um, yeah, just a ton of stuff. Early appearance of Krang the Conqueror. Kang the Conqueror. Sorry. I said Krang from Turtles. <laughs> I always love this cover right here. Doctor Doom. It's a great cover. The Collector. First appearance of Collector. This is another book that dropped off. The hype made it huge and then it just, it's a nothing now. Uh, here, let me skip ahead to a few, find just some interesting ones. Um, <laughs> this one. I always thought Submarine was drawn so terribly here. I never liked it. Um, here we go. Black Knight. Another Black Knight. Low grade, though. Here we go. Grim Reaper. First cameo of Ultron. Then the first Ultron. Let's see what I got here. Uh, the Invaders. Here's a Neil Adams. Uh, Avengers. Yeah, then it just kind of gets sporadic in the Bronze Age. Like, I always like this cover. Um, just kind of sporadic between. It would take me, this book used to be really expensive. Not as much anymore. Kind of falling off. Yeah, just, um, here we go. Cool cover of Kang. Yeah, just like, just here, just random books. Like, it jumps from, you know, here it goes. It jumps from, like, 149, and then the next issue I have is, like, 203. All right, so it just kind of jumps around. Um, no, here we go. Got an annual. No, um, first Taskmaster, so... But yeah, there's that box. Okay, on to the next box. Um, this is a pretty expensive box. There we go. This is another slabbed box. So yeah, just a bunch more slabs, which is nice. One PGX book. First parents of Omega Red. This is signed by Michael Golden. Darth Vader 3. This is interesting. I didn't even know what this was. Um, it's actually um, Marvel Graphic Novels number four is the first appearance of the New Mutants. Um, you know, it came out a while ago. And, and this is actually the sixth printing. And it has a variant cover pretty much by Adam Hughes. Uh, 
variant cover. Strange Academy number one variant cover. People love this book. She-Hulk number one. First appearance of Jessica Jones. So that TV show that was on Netflix, this is her first appearance in Alias number one. This is signed by Chris Claremont. Logan's Run number one. They're actually supposed to remake this movie. Here we go. First appearance of Silk. Very cool black cat variant cover. I wonder how long this video is going to be. X first appearance of X23, which was in she was in Logan. First full appearance of Apocalypse. A variant cover. Dream Mystery 108. Hulk 1 or 2. And I like the issue before this better than this cover. Even though I think the what the characters are doing are cool in this one. But I just like the blue background compared to this brown and red background. But yeah. Alright. So that's pretty much it for that box. All right, on to the next box. What do we got here? Sergeant Fury. Yeah, no number one, but it goes pretty much all the way up to, uh, I think, 80 or something like that. But no number one. Which, Sergeant Fury, of all the older Marvels, Silver Age Marvels, is still relatively cheap. Um, war was much popular back in the day. The old war comics like Our Army at War, Our Fighting Forces, stuff like that. Sergeant Rock, Sergeant Fury, you know, whoever else they had. Here we go. First appearance of Zemo. Right there. That's his first appearance. So if you ever want to know, the Zemo that... I could scoot... Yeah, I could scoot that up. Um, that's his first appearance. A Hitler cover. You won't see those anymore. First appearance, I think, Captain Savage. Um, let's see, this is another cool book. A Captain America fought in World War II. Yeah, just some... Okay, yeah, so it goes up to 75. I think the series goes up to 120. I don't know. I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, and then we got the annuals. This annual is actually pretty nice. And then it goes to annual 6. So that's the Sergeant Fury box. Obviously, there's in between. I just kind of siphled through them because I don't want to be here you know, for 16 hours <laughs> going through every book. All right, so on to the next box. What do we got here for this box? We got Thor, Journey of the Mystery. Um, yeah, 
bunch of Thors. First appearance of the gray gargoyle. Watch out, if he touches you, he turns stone. This is a cool book where he fights Magneto. Have you guys ever seen, it was a show in the 60s where they took basically the com comic panels, it was a cartoon, and kind of moved them around and added a little bit extra. And there's this famous one where the Fantastic Four is fighting Magneto and and the way they capture Magneto is Reed Richards decides to make a gun and then Magneto's like, you fool, I am the master of magnetism. I can easily take your gun away from you. And so he tries to use his powers and nothing happens. And then he goes, what does he say? He goes, my powers are gone. I'm helpless now. Take me in. And then the cops come and arrest him. And then he's like, how did you beat me? He's like, this is actually a wooden gun that I painted to make look like a metal gun. He's like, oh, how could you tricked me? And like, that's it. He gives up. I'm like, you do realize, A, number one, you could have tried your powers on something else. B, once you found out it was a wooden gun and you knew you had your powers back, why didn't you just take off the handcuffs and move the car and kill people? I don't know. It's funny. A simpler time. Uh, Thor... Uh, 126. Um, I always like this cover. Yeah, and then it pretty much is mostly complete all the way through. Uh, high evolutionary. Um, yeah, it's all pretty much complete. Pick out any cool ones. First appearance of the, or this is the first Black Bolt origin and first appearance of the record, I believe. Um, got Galactus, Origin of Galactus. First appearance of Adam Warlock, but kind of a junky copy. Um, yeah. Then we got the annuals. So yeah, it pretty much stops. This one stops at around. This is the last issue of the Thor. So 170. So right before Bronze Age kind of hits at like, was it like 190 something? 193 or something like that? All right, on to the next box. All right, back to a few cases. Spider Man 299. Look at this. Another Silver Surfer. And then, the last case book, Avengers 1. This is restored, but still, it's Avengers 1. All right. Um, the rest in this box is going to be X-Men number 2 all the way through 66. So pretty much the entire Silver Age run of X-Men, complete. So, I mean... I got the number one that's cased, so it's pretty much a complete run of X-Men 1 through 66. After that, after 66, um, they battle the Hulk in 66, and then, and then um, it goes to reprints. And the reason why I went to reprints is because the X-Men, believe it or not, was not selling that well. And so they didn't know what to do with it, so they decided to turn it into reprints. Why? Because reprints are easy. Because all they have to do is sometimes they draw a new cover or a variation of the same cover, but just, you know, different. And they'd reprint the books because back then, here's a good one. Very expensive these days. Because um, back then, there was no internet. The only way you could literally reread the comic book is you had to know someone who had it. So they made reprints of their earlier issues. And so that started at 67. So, and then what ended up happening was they came out with giant size X-Men number one. It proved to be pretty good. 
So then starting on X-Men 94, they launched with the new run of the X-Men, new characters for the most part. And then that obviously was a massive hit. For some reason, the earlier Silver Age stuff wasn't that much of a hit. They couldn't, it, didn't, it wasn't a big seller. Not sure why. I didn't exist in the 60s. They even uh, got over Neil Adams to do a bunch of covers. And that still did not sway people. Yeah, I'm kind of skipping around now. I got the first Polaris, which was Magneto's other daughter. First Barry Smith art, working for Marvel. Scott Summers' brother, Alex Summers, cameo and became Havoc. Which is right here. Yeah, so now you got, and you got Sauron. See, now you got Neil Adams doing the covers. He did it pretty much all the way the rest of the way through. And then I got a couple copies here of X-Men 66, which was the last book in the series. All right, one box left, I believe. Let me check around, make sure I'm not missing one. Yes, one box left. Last one, home stretch. Um, we made it so far. Sorry it's so long, but it is what it is. It's a big collection. Um, yeah, this is the FF box. First appearance of Super Scroll. I thought he was going to make an appearance in a movie at some point, but... I guess not. Sorry, I'm going through these really fast. It says I didn't want to have this video be so long. And uh, yeah, Doctor Doom cover. But yeah, this is mostly complete. Um, I think after like 21 or so. 21, there's a couple down below, but then after 21, it's pretty much complete all the way up. And it goes all the way up to, I think, like 100 and something. Pretty much where Bronze Age starts. That's, that's pretty much how this collection seems to be. It's mostly a Silver Age, which is good. I like me my Silver Age. But yeah, so overall, I'm pretty happy with this collection. Um, I'm actually very excited that, you know, it ended up being the, the my biggest purchase in my entire career. Um, that just, you know, that just helps me, I guess, mentally know that, you know, hey, I'm, you know, growing in size, I guess, you know, that I'm able to get bigger and bigger collections. Um when I was a kid, I remember my dad would get these massive, massive collections all the time. I'd have to go through it for him. But it's just nice. I like this cover. Reminds me of old, like, Golden Age cover. It's just nice uh, that I was able to get this and make it work. So, um, here we go. First full black bolt. These silver server covers are just going up like crazy. I had this book as a kid, and I read it actually. It's where the thing, Ben Grimm, <laughs> it's funny, he sacrifices himself, right? Here you go, first Black Panther. Uh, he sacrifices himself, but it's actually not the thing. It's a guy that took the thing's powers and the thing turned into um, a normal man, and this normal man got the thing's powers. And 
Uh, Reed Richards, I think, is in the negative zone. And originally, the, the guy who changed into the thing just wanted... I don't know exactly. I can't remember what he wanted, but he just... Uh, I guess he wanted to be part of the thing. But he wasn't really a bad guy, because in the end, he sacrificed himself to save Reed Richards. He threw him because the rope snapped or something like that, and he had to go in there and get him, or I can't remember exactly. I read this when I was a kid. And, uh, yeah, and then... He ends up sacrificing himself, staying in the negative zone. I think it was the negative zone. Um, and saving Reed Richards, throwing him back in. And so then they thought that, oh no, you know, he's dead. The thing is dead. And then what happens when the negative zone closed or whatever happened to it, um, the Ben Grimm turned back into the thing and then showed up and was like, and everyone's all happy to see him. And you're like, you're alive. And he's like, what? I've just been outside taking a stroll. <laughs> But yeah, I remember that one as a kid. A uh, bunch of Fantastic Fours. Let's see if there's any... Yeah, a couple duplicates of Stings. Um, here we go. Here's a book that's like massively dropped in value recently. Um, yeah, it stops at 101. That's the last one for this. And then it has um, a couple of the annuals it goes up to annual six right there which is the first appearance of annihilus um yeah so that's pretty much it i think i went through all the boxes i think we made it through for the most part unless i'm forgetting a box somewhere i don't know um there's just boxes all around me i just i didn't really have much of a system i should have um but yeah so pretty happy overall with this. Um, I've already made a few notes, which ones I'm going to send to CGC and stuff like that to get graded. Not too many um, are going to get graded. Most of all the good stuff is already graded. So that's kind of nice. Um, saves me on time because it'll take forever to get back from CGC. But, but yeah, so, you know, pretty much a nice little Silver Age collection that I got. Uh, very excited. Like I said, both parties, me and the, and the seller, were very happy. Everything went super smooth, um, minus the fact that I overpaid for shipping, but that's my bad. Um, but, but yeah, so like I'm always buying collections. Um, I get a lot of people. A lot of times it doesn't work out. Sometimes it does, and this one worked out very well. Uh, I'm pretty happy about this. So, so yeah, I'm just going to go through and kind of catalog all this stuff and get it ready to sell or whatever I'm going to do with it. Um, but yeah, if you like this type of stuff, please think about subscribing. Um, it really helps out the channel. And, you know, if you are subscribed, thanks. Leave a comment of or, and a like like this. If you leave a comment of maybe a book in here that you once had or still do have, um, maybe one of like your the earliest book you can remember getting, like for example, me, I remember getting that FF, uh, what was it, 51? Um, yeah, something like that. Like maybe, exp you know, tell me a story about like, oh, I remember getting this book that you had in there. Um, I always like hearing that stuff. Like people tell me, it's like, oh, I remember going to my local comic shop in, you know, 1986 and, you know, yada, yada, yada and stuff. So that's always interesting to me because I have stories like that too. So I like hearing both sides. Um, but yeah, like uh, as always, a link to my website down below. It's uh, collectorscomics.com. Uh, we release new uh, comics every Wednesday, usually. Every Wednesday, late afternoon, night. Sometimes, if we can't get to them, it's Thursday. Uh, so, always check out there to see what's being launched first. And if you're into music, check out my music. Love Angeles is the band. I'm on every streaming platform. Uh, there's a link to my YouTube in the description as well, but it's Love Angeles Music at YouTube. All right, thanks.